New year, new goals. Kirsten and I set up our Minnesota Wild vision board while also projecting what the goalie situation might look like as injuries continue to ravage the hometown squad. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, brought to you by Soda Sick, presented by Talk North, Grain Belt, Jim Beam, Rail Credit Union, and Livia. This is Season 5, Episode 209. Let's do the Boldy Shuffle. Soda Stick's latest team collaboration features wild forward Matt Boldy, a Soda Stick and Hockey Lodge exclusive tee. Be sure to shop all Soda Stick sports merch at sodastick.com, where Bar Down Beauties gets you 15% off every purchase. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021. James B. Beam Distilling Company Incorporated. Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? We are back. Happy New Year. I'm Jesse Pierce, writer for NHL.com. She's Kirsten Kroll, arena host for your Minnesota Wild. Kirsten, Happy New Year. Happy 2024. Happy New Year. The vibes are good. I will say now the holidays are over. I'm repping baseball. I have a spring fever. So, I mean, we're done with the holidays. So now it's basically spring, right? Yeah. I mean, we finally got snow. So I feel like it's a bad time for you to be leaning into the spring vibes, but that's okay. Agreed. But if you would have asked me four days ago when we had no snow and it was 50 <laughs> degrees, it would have made perfect sense. I'm repping the Minnesota Vikings, but I don't know why. I, after that atrocity that was New Year's Eve game, I just, I, I'm done with them. I'm done with Minnesota sports, mostly. The Wilds, they're hanging on by a thread, but I might be done with them soon, too. I can't tell. Excuse me, what about the Wolves? Yeah, they're good, right? I hear people keep telling me that the Wolves are, are a thing, huh? They're the best record in the league still. Wow. Really that's... upset LeBron James on his birthday. So howl. Maybe we'll turn this into a Wolves podcast at some point in time. I th- I'm on board. Howl. All right. Howl. Ooh. Howl. Ooh. 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 <laughs> and everybody turned off the episode. Uh, let's talk a little bit about our Minnesota Wild. Kirsten, do you make New Year's resolutions? Like, is that a thing that you do still or not? Not really. I don't think you understand. I am a very, I'm a Virgo. Okay. I'm very detail oriented. I am very organized for the most part. I write out my goals like very, very specific. I make lists every single year. I have a whole list of new year's resolutions. That is actually my plan for this afternoon. Me and my friend are getting together. Um, I don't know if we're going to have coffee or what we're going to do, but we're literally writing out all of our goals for 2024 and creating vision boards and going over what we did and didn't do last year. So I'm very into new year's resolutions. I love that for you. I I just never achieve them. I never fulfill them. I just, I, I set goals, but then I'm like, eh, whatever. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll go to the gym once or twice in 2024. I believe in you. 2024, it just, the vibes, they feel different heading you know, it's like I woke yeah. up this morning, a new person, a clean slate, fresh you start. Didn't, you didn't wake up hungover with kids screaming in your face like I did because that sounds a lot better. I woke up at 5 a.m. with a dog crying because he needed to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, that's fair. If you were to set a New Year's resolution or New Year's resolutions for the Minnesota Wild, who currently have lost back-to-back games against the Winnipeg Jets. Didn't look bad, though. I'm not even going to get mad about it. Uh, They finally put John Merrill up in the press box, so we've got one thing heading into 2024. But what are some resolutions you would make on behalf of John Hines and the Minnesota Wild? Anything top of mind that comes first to your thoughts? Um, I feel like there's a few things. First, limit John Merrill's ice time. That would be... First and foremost, um, maybe put up a cot in the press box or something. That would be something that would be cool. Um, mm, Jewel Erickson Eck, I would love to see him. And I don't know if this is necessarily a resolution, but like a goal. I want to see him win the Selkie. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 There that is. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, man. I don't know. I need to think about it a little bit more. That's fair. Um, maybe not always playing from behind is mm-hmm. a good resolution to have as well. Not talking so much like recent, but just thinking about this season as a whole, what we can do to improve 
this new year. Um, maybe Mark Andre Fleury aim for another goalie fight. Uh, we do have yeah. St. Louis on the calendar still in 2024, so there's still time for Bennington and him to face off. These are good. I think these could create a really good vision board. Actually, I kind of honestly, like we should make idea. one. We probably should. We probably will. Let's do that. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. That's that's what we'll do. We will share that with you this week because it's going to happen because hashtag content. Uh, my resolutions get healthy. How about we do that? The Minnesota Wild Ooh, need to get healthy. Stay one, healthy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would be good. Philip Gustafson sounds like he's going to be out a couple weeks. Minnesota weeks weaves <laughs> a couple weeks. The Minnesota Wild moving him to injured reserve. Kirill Kaprizov sounds like he might be more than a day to day situation. Benny Letary's day to day. Matt Zuccarello continues to be week to week. Jonas Brodine continues to be week to week. Not a good situation. Kirsten. Get healthy. Top of the vision board. Top of the New Year's resolution li list. Although, can you make that a resolution when you don't have much control over it? Well, we can put them in bubble wrap. Yeah, so there's okay. some things we can do. That's true. I like that. Let's let's do that. We'll bring that up to Billy uh, with the bubble wrap with our vision board. We're obviously going to present the vision board to Billy G, right? I think we should tape it on the GM home suite door. Yeah, yeah. He can't miss right it then. No, it's right and there. everybody else can see it too. Yeah, brilliant. This is going to be good. This is going to go over really well. Just holding everyone accountable. Yeah, exa exactly. That's that's the most important. Uh, speaking of being held accountable, I think we need to hold Billy Garen more accountable. We need to see him. I want him to make some moves at deadline. Before I was like, you know what, maybe let's stay pat. I want to make some moves. I can't, not, doesn't have moves? to be splashy. I want to move John Merrill and Alex Goligoski. You want to set up a cut in the press box? I want them out of this. Okay, team, how do, can, can, do you know the terms of Merrill's contract? Because I don't. I'm So I'm asking. Let me, you know what? Let me uh, can we look that up. And if we can, why haven't we? Salary cap. Um, his salary is 1.2 million. Cap hits 1.2 million. Uh, he is a 31-year-old defenseman. Let me check his clauses. I think he might be one of the few. He was drafted. I don't care about well, I don't care about any of that. He will be an unrestricted free agent after next year i don't see guys correct me if i'm wrong but i don't see any clauses that said there's no move or no trade which seems kind of crazy right it does one of two maybe one of on the, the whole team. yeah right let's see i think i think uh i think he could be he could be moved you know what i think he can be i i'm going with it Tell me if I'm wrong, guys. Let me know if you think I'm wrong. But based on cap friendly, I don't see anything that says no move or no trade for John Merrill. He signed his three-year contract. looking for another defenseman? Yeah. Give him to San Jose. Give him to San Give him to Buffalo. Give him. I don't I don't care. I sent him to Siberia. I love John Ooh. Merrill as a person. I'm going to reiterate that. He is a fantastic human being. I can't watch him play hockey anymore. I can't watch him not play hockey anymore. Yeah. I would second that. It's just... It gives me anxiety. <clears throat> oh, man, I'm dying. Talking about being healthy. How about me? Um, <laughs> he just gives me anxiety whenever he's out on the ice. And he gives the other team goals whenever he's out on the ice. The, the way he's kind of like a pylon out there, just watching the other team score, I can't do it anymore. And I don't understand. Here's the other big question I have for Billy G, speaking of being held accountable. Why? Like, why are we still playing the John Merrill card? Like, what's happening there? Like, what, what's the either. reasoning? Because Dakota Mermis isn't bad. Damon Hunt is not bad. Like, I don't see a reason that John Merrill continues to play because it's not even like he has this, like, astounding veteran status. Like, he's not good. And same with Alex Goligoski. Like, I'm, I'm as my friend Judd Zolgad says, the goose is cooked. He's a little, it's just, it's it's done. Like, he's he's on my, my uh, bucket list to get traded as well. I think he does have no move. And, he does uh, have a no move. Yeah, so we're kind of stuck there. But, I, Billy, we got to do something. That's my resolution. Bill Guerin needs to figure out that situation. Are they turnovers or are they passing them purposely to help the other team? <laughs> that sounds like some undercover CIA situation. Maybe is... I am. I can't tell. That's a secret. This is probably going to be one of our more unhinged episodes of the new year, but I'm I'm all in. I am all in. Uh, my other resolution would be Marcus Johansson keeps it up. And by keeps yes. it up, I mean keeps the play up. Marcus Johansson, we love 
what we are seeing. Um, I think I will say, you know, kudos to the Minnesota Wild and what they've been able to achieve with the said injuries, even before Kirill and even before Gustafson got hurt when they were without Spurgeon and Broads and, and Zuki, the wins that they were stringing together and kind of the very nearly complete 60 minute games that they were doing prior to the back to backs to win it with Winnipeg. It was good. And Marcus Johansson was a huge part of that. Hartsey too. Ryan Hartman, my shoe buddy, my best friend. Um, he, uh, he's been crushing it. I, I don't want to say I'm surprised that they found that part of their game, but what do you think it is that's changed for Marcus Johansson? Well, first I want to say, yes, Kings go off, continue. I love it. Um, what's changed, maybe partially the coaching change and having a fresh start. Like, honestly, that's the first thing that comes to mind is maybe just mentally feeling like a little bit of a load has been taken off. And so maybe some of the pressure has, and also too, just getting like, I don't want to say more comfortable, but that confidence getting built up in turn. And I think too, like once you get one goal, then it kind of, in a sense, opens the floodgates where it's like a brick off your shoulders. Yeah. No, the, like, a brick, like the specific weight. I like that. Like a heavy <laughs> I, was, I don't know why I said a brick, <laughs> but I was like, why did that sound so odd? Like, cause a it brick was off your shoulders. <laughs> it was, I mean, that's fair. That's, that's all right. I'm okay with it. But yeah, I mean, I think you're probably right. I think also putting Johansson with Marco Rossi, I know we all loved what Marco Rossi was doing on the top line, and he certainly deserved those minutes. But I certainly love Marco Rossi between Ryan Hartman and Marcus Johansson far better than I liked him with Felino and Hartman or whatever combination that is. Um, but I think that's helped. I think Marco Rossi is helping elevate other players, which, you know, asked me this last year, that was never going to happen, right? Like, Credit to Marco Rossi for bringing maybe some of the best out of guys like JoJo and Hartsey and, and getting that line to really elevate itself and excel. Another king who's just been going off. Um, I did also think of another New Year's resolution. Okay. I would like to see, and this continues from last year because it just hadn't happened last year, so we're going to aim higher in 2024. Mm -hmm. A wild player to get on the NHL style rankings, and I think Brandon Duhame is making a very strong case recently um, with credit to Marc-Andre Fleury. You know, I asked Duham about the boots with the fur, right? He was, so in case you guys have missed it, which unless you're under a rock, I don't think you could have missed it, but there is a current prank war going on in the Minnesota Wild locker room. Brandon Duham last week, maybe two weeks ago now, had called Marc-Andre Fleury 50 years old on TV, live on the air, which of course Marcus Felino then showed Mark Andre Fleury and said, Hey, check this out. So Duhame was asking for it. Duhame was yes. asking for it and he got it. He he played with fire and Mark Andre Fleury, who has friends everywhere, mind you, right? He has played, I think, with like 236 different teammates in the span of his thousandth games. Uh big stick tap stick tap to him. But uh first game, one game, he takes Brandon Duhame's shirt and leaves him with a jacket to wear. Only a jacket. So tarps off and a 70s style jacket a game or two later mark andre fleury takes duham shoes and leaves him with boots with the fur so brandon duham as wait this hasn't been confirmed but they had the minnesota wild secret santas the other day and we believe brandon duham was flurry secret santa because flurry was gifted a cane an old man cane which he then took out onto the ice so brandon duham's going to continue to get it which is going to be hilarious uh but i asked duham about the boots and he's like you know what they're actually pretty comfortable and i like them and i'm going to wear them and style them up with something i was like good on you man because that's the thing duham continues to feed it into mark andre flurry like i had overheard the other day too Dewey asking Flurry if he had put a water cup under his helmet, which was intended to spill onto Duhame's head. And Flurry, of course, I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, well, good, because I just drank the water. It didn't get me. Like, it's just, he's like egging it on. <laughs> it's like Duhame is looking straight into the devil's eyes, except Flurry's not the devil. It's just an analogy. So no one come for me, please. <laughs> Duhame's looking into the devil's eyes and like he's not afraid, which honestly makes me more afraid of Brandon Duhame and what he's capable of. It's I you know what? I that's just it. Like, and I had asked Flurry too. I said, Do you prefer a guy that just will quietly sit and take it or laugh it off? Or do you want a guy like Duhame that will like continue to entice and egg it on and just kind of like rub it in your face, like, oh, it didn't matter. Cause like that's kind of that's frustrating, right? It's like the Jewel Eric's neck face. Like Come on, man. Like, give me something back. I also Duhame's... saw Jewel Borderline get punched in the face a number of times this past week. So. Yeah, he did. He was he was really I uh, I was in the Jets locker room following their game in St. Paul. 
and a lot of disdain and a lot of curse words for Jules Eriksson and Ryan Hartman from the Jets players. Like they were just not too thrilled with those two players. Yeah, they can stop whining. They can stop whining. The Winnipeg Jets are good. Sorry, guys. The Winnipeg Jets. Another resolution I have for the Minnesota Wild. Power play needs to get better. It has improved. I like the improvements. They are not dead last anymore, but uh, still middle of the road, 21st in the entire league with an 18.6 success rate. What are your thoughts, Kirsten? And this was a Twitter outrage, and so I'm trying to stir the pot maybe a little bit. Jared Spurgeon obviously comes back after missing seven games. Brock Faber had been eating up those minutes on the top power play unit, but immediately with Spurge coming back, Hines put Spurgeon back on that top unit. Were you in the camp where it was like, this is a, a monster, this is an atrocity, why would you not have... Faber did fantastic on the, on the top PP, don't get me wrong. Uh, and he just moved on to PP too, so it's not like he completely went away. Which side of the wall did you fall on with that decision? Because I will say, Spurgeon looks off. And he's, I mean, he should be. It's been seven games that he's missed, so I didn't necessarily love him on the top PP unit, but I certainly didn't want to get the outrage of it. Where do you, where do you lie? Do you see me smirking? Because I we see talked about this at our live show on Thursday. And I literally word for word, quote, end quote, said, when Spurgeon comes back, I hope and I need John Hines to not take Brock Faber off the top power play unit because there's no reason he deserved to be taken off. And then, of course, as you just mentioned, first game Spurgeon comes back. What happened? Brock Faber got demoted and Spurgeon seniority captain. I don't care. Gets put back on the top power play unit. Did he look bad? No. Was he a little off? Like you mentioned? Yes. Did Brock Faber deserve to be taken off? No. So why, why it is? I mean, it's the seniority thing, right? I think it's because it's Jared Spurgeon. I know I, I get, I see, I was not as opposed to it, because I was like, well, you know what? Just see what happens. See what happens. He can change it. John Hines can change it before this Calgary game or before the Tampa Bay game here, which we'll get into in the second half of the segment. But I don't know. I, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, where Fabes has done everything to earn the minutes and the situations that he has, including that top PP. But I don't know. I didn't hate it like everyone did. Maybe that's because I'm old. Like, you're the young. You're representing the youth and the people that are working to climb up. And I'm like, nah, this is mine. I've been here longer. <laughs> It's just business, baby. We've heard it from Bill Guerin a lot. You lose your spot. Eh, it's just business. I mean, that's true. I think, you know what? How do you feel like Ryan Hartman's really reacted to losing his spot, but then coming back? I mean, again, he's with injury. He's moved up in the lineup. But I mean, he was playing down at the bottom. I laugh. He had told us when he did get back from his two game stint of injury or whatever that was. He was like, I'd play goalie if they wanted me to play. So I love that attitude. But how do you think Ryan Hartman has really adjusted this year? Because as we know, last year, he was on that top line. He was with Zuki and Kirill, and everybody kind of argued he's not a top line center. And he hasn't even played center. He went back to wing now, which I think is also a good move. Uh, But how do you think Ryan Hartman's really done this year? We haven't talked too much about our boy Hartsey. I don't think he cares about getting moved from top line. If anything, I do think he's probably a little bit more comfortable in a way. I think maybe being that top line center for the stint, I don't want to say it was a challenge, but different. So I think maybe now he's more comfortable, especially coming back, you know, from the short injury that he did have and almost seamlessly going back into the way of things, but didn't love necessarily his play earlier this year. But I think him alongside Marcus Foligno too have really taken another stride at this point in the year. So I've been impressed. They're two different players. They know their roles on the team, and I think they just kind of embrace wherever they're at. Let's talk about Marcus Foligno. He's having a quietly good year this year. I mean, he's been fairly consistent. We saw the physicality kind of not, I don't want to say return, but I mean, he was throwing hits, using that body out there like nothing against the Winnipeg Jets here on New Year's Eve in St. Paul. Um, He's scoring a little bit more the productions there, and he's obviously that glue guy, right? I mean, how do you think Marcus Foligno has done another guy like Ryan Hartman, who Bill Guerin has extended and who is going to be with this team for the next couple of seasons where I know people have their own feelings, but I'm liking the direction Marcus Foligno's game is heading at this point in the year. Yeah, I do too. I couldn't have said that at the start of the year. Like, <laughs> you know, we had kind of said with Hartman, but especially in the Winnipeg series too, I thought he's been playing really well. And like you said, quietly, 
doing things. And aside too from kind of finding his stride with even getting on the scoreboard, he's just been doing a lot of little things right. I love watching him because we've seen it a couple times where he'll get kind of maybe that odd man rush or he'll try to like do a little stick handling. And I don't mean this negatively, but it's like you don't think of Marcus Foligno and you don't think of like a skilled player, right? Like no. necessarily like you're not thinking like, oh, watch him go in and do the backhand. But he's done that a couple times this year. And I'm like, look at Marcus go like do his little dipsy doodle or, you know, do something kind of fancy. And Ryan Hartman's done that a couple times, too. Like some of the goals that Hartsy has scored this year are freaking beauties like just gorgeous but I'm I'm liking Moose and being like hey I can do some skill too out here it's just kind of and it's funny because it looks so off-putting when he does it like he literally looks like kind of a deer that's misplaced on the ice sometimes or a moose if you will uh I just find it kind of funny it is I don't know I it's that comfortability man they're they're finding their spot they're easing in and yeah I don't know I'm here for it I want to see more of it I'm here for it, too. We're going to take a quick break, you guys. When we come back, we'll get our Minnesota Wild predictions for the upcoming week. We're going to talk about Philip Gustafson and Marc-Andre Fleury and what the situation in the Minnesota Wild. And that will be, plus, I want to talk some PWHL women's hockey as well uh, as their season gets kicked off today, New Year's Eve day, uh, with the Minnesota, or Team Minnesota, as we're calling them, uh, kicking off in just a couple of days. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here with Bardown Beauties reminding you that this new year, choose you. If you've tried every which way to lose weight and haven't seen the results you want, I'd like to introduce you to the Livia Way. The Livia Way is a personalized one-on-one approach to help you not only lose weight, but also boost your self-confidence and guide you to a healthier and happier version of yourself. If you join Livia today, you'll get your first months absolutely free. That's right. First three months, absolutely free. It couldn't be better. I know it has worked for me. The one-on-one support at my Woodbury Clinic has done tremendous things. It's why I've lost more than 30 pounds. It's why I've dropped 19 inches and I continue to go. I could not be more thrilled by choosing me this year. You should do the same. Visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. New year, choose you. Let's get started the Livia way. going on guys we're back let's talk a little bit more about your minnesota wild and the week ahead kirsten do you want should we do our weekly predictions first or should we talk a little bit more about the potential troubles on the horizon for the minnesota Wild in regard to goaltending uh philip gustafson as we talked about in the first half on ir right now with a lower body injury um jesper velstead who everybody has wanted to see has clamored to see at some point this year and we said if an injury were to occur then possibly he's also hurt so you ain't going to see him until he gets better if Gus is out long-term. Do you think Marc-Andre Fleury can kind of handle this workload? Coming into the season, we all kind of knew he was going to be the backup. Marc-Andre Fleury knew that he was going to be the backup, right? It was going to kind of be just this feeling out situation with Gus taking the workload. But now Flower, it's got to be his net. His year's kind of been up and down, topsy-turvy. Uh, how do you feel about him being the number one while Gus uh, starts to heal himself? I think for the most part, he's looked great. Not Maybe not. He's had games where he's looked great. Overall, he's looked pretty good still. So I honestly, I'm okay with it. Gus, yes, he was still the hot hand, but I'm still comfortable with Flurry being in net. Um, and that there is a silver lining to the situation. It is that we get to see Flurry possibly continue to climb in the record books and even break tie some records here. So if there's a silver lining, it is that, which also have to say, Super surreal being in Minnesota, being at the games in person, getting to see Flurry, for example, play his thousandth game. Like I was standing next to my coworkers who are just like literally tearing up when that was announced. So like just a very special time to be in Minnesota. I know that's a little bit of a sidetrack, but I'm comfortable with Flurry in net. I'm here for it. I think again, and I know we've talked about it a little this year because it is kind of, it feels like the culmination, kind of the farewell tour for Mark Andre Flurry. Um and I know I've said he is the nicest human being I have ever met in my entire life, like just a genuinely good person. Um, but I do want to remind fans, yeah, like soak it in. Like this is cool. It is history making. Like these records that Patrick Waugh, Martin Brodeur have have etched into history have been untouchable forever by any goaltender. I mean, a goalie is already hard to establish himself in any sort of big limelight, right? And he's going, he is going to tie Patrick Wye. I have no doubt about that. He's currently one shy from tying him for wins. He needs another win to tie him for second all time. The Martin Brodeur situation 
for games and wins are it's untouchable. I don't think Mark Andre Fleury will get there. He'd have to play another like 10 years, I think, to get that because Broads Roder had put such uh, an incredible career together for that. But yeah, I mean, I think fans, I hope you guys, and I think they do, right? We saw the standing ovation for his thousandth game. They will celebrate and honor him with a silver stick down the road. I'm guessing the February game when they host the Pittsburgh Penguins, that will likely be it. But so that will we'll get another big go around for, for Marc-Andre Fleury. But I just want to remind you guys to really appreciate this because you don't get to see a Hall of Fame player every day and one that's really creating historical moments. It's It's pretty incredible to watch. It is. And I definitely, I felt it in that arena on yesterday. So Sunday, I, New Year's Eve. Yeah. I love his humbleness about it too. He's like, I'm just glad it's, it's over. Like, I'm just, yeah. you know, like he really doesn't. And I get that because he is, he's the true definition of a team first guy, you know, as we'd mentioned uh, him backing up Gus and him being okay with whatever role he needs to play. And he's done that, not just here in Minnesota. He's certainly done that in Chicago. He did that in Pittsburgh and in Vegas. And I mean, he's just that ultimate team guy but yeah really soak it in if you were to get a named jersey i would always suggest a mark andre Fleury one because that's pretty incredible not a bad choice not a bad choice do you think kirsten say yes Bell said is healed up maybe he's healed up by like wednesday and, and gus again from what mike russo of the athletic reports he is undergoing an mri which probably means it's going to be quite a bit of time before gus comes back depending on how that mri sketches out hopefully we'll know more on tuesday but would you want Jesper to come back? Currently, Zane McIntyre is the backup. Um, we've seen Zane a couple times in NHL game situations. He does fine. Uh, but obviously, we want Jesper, right? If we can get him, if he's if he's healthy and, and come up here and play. Or do you want to still keep him in the American Hockey League and just let him continue to season and soak up everything there? I kind of, and this isn't going to be a popular take, but I kind of lean towards wanting to keep him in the AHL for the rest of this season. Like, I want to see Wallstead. I don't necessarily want to see him under these conditions, especially. <laughs> I mean, the team's gotten better, so it's not like the atrocity that it was to start the year, but I still just don't love it. I would rather, when he does come up, really give him his moment, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I mean, obviously, you want to look at who's going to give you the best chance to win, right? Like, I you need to have a goaltender that's capable of stepping in when Marc-Andre Fleury needs a break and he is going to need a break. These are every other day game situations. There are division game situations coming up this week um, and next and the rest of this month, in fact. So, I mean, I think Jesper probably gives you the better chance to win. So I could see why they would want to do that. But I agree with you mostly. Like I want him to stay down there and we'll get him next year. You will have Jesper mm -hmm. all next year. It's going to be amazing. Exactly. We're going to love it. Like I'm not in this. We need to have him up here. However, I am in the boat where you want to win. And so I do think he gives you a leg up in that situation. Or maybe Marc-Andre Fleury goes on this wild ride and he just, you know, crushes it this month of January. That's a possibility. Maybe that's a New Year's resolution. Marc-Andre Fleury, top goaltender for the month of January. Honestly, maybe. And I truly, I do feel like, and I don't think anyone's thinking otherwise, but that Fleury is our obvious best option for the month of January, for sure. I just... Especially if Wallstead's coming back from an injury, you just don't know necessarily how that's going to fare, mm -hmm. especially having him come straight to the NHL. And maybe it's a situation where you want to make sure, as you kind of touched on, that your defense is stout and secure, right? That you don't yep. have a, a John Merrill or an Alex Goligoski in the lineup when you're going to put yes for yeah, Wallstead. Exactly. In just simple things, guys. We're just asking simple things. Uh, simple things being, how will the Minnesota Wild do this week? Let's get our Wild weekly predictions. Kirsten, they host the Calgary Flames on Tuesday at XL Energy Center, host the Tampa Bay Lightning Thursday, go to Columbus for one quick one on Saturday before hosting everyone's favorite Dallas Stars on Monday. What do you got for a record for those four games for the Minnesota Wild? I got a three wins and a one. Who are they losing to? Say it. Dallas. Oh. See, now I have to pick Dallas. I have what do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I think I think they're going to lose to Columbus. Just really? Yeah, it's gross. It's gross. I don't like picking that, but I think they're going to lose to Columbus. They're going to beat Calgary and Tampa and Dallas. Because I need them to beat Dallas. I just need them to beat Dallas. Gosh, that means I'm going to have I mean, to wear my cool great, shoes on but... Monday. Yeah. 
cool yeah, shoes. I like cool zoned out with Tyler Sagan. Say, me cool and Tyler shoes Sagan. on Monday. Yeah, I'm going to have to wear cool shoes on Monday because they host the Dallas Stars. So me and Saggy can be like, sup, we're shoe buddies. This is my, this is my identity cool now. Shoes every day. Yeah, I mean, that would Life's be something too short I would strive to wear boring for. shoes. I should strive for that more often. Mm-hmm. But I'm. this is my new identity that I'm leaning fully into in 2024. You have a vision board. I have a shoe board. I'm going to have to go buy some new shoes. They're all tennis shoes, though, because that's that's what we all look at in locker rooms. Little known fact. We always look at shoes in the locker rooms, players and media. Just that's what we do. Just so you well, know. Well, maybe I should waltz down there in my sparkle boots. In your sparkle boots. Absolutely. No, I, yeah, I encourage that. I think they're going to beat the Dallas Stars on Monday. They're at least All not right. going to get routed eight to three or whatever that situation was the last time that Dallas was in town. I hope. Well, Kevin Gorg, I hope you're listening. Yeah, he's not going to like that. He's going to hate it. He's not going to like it at all. I don't know if that's my game prediction or not. Well, you is... can't do two different game predictions. <laughs> that's true, too. Uh, they're going to beat him. They're going to beat him. That's okay. what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to do it. Right. Uh, you know who else is going to continue winning this week? PWHL Minnesota. Their season kicks off on Wednesday in Boston, and then they come for their home opener on Saturday at XL Energy Center, where, Kirsten, we will see a familiar face because it's the year of Kirsten Crawl, everybody. A big round of applause. Kirsten, tell the people some exciting news as it pertains to the PWHL Minnesota. You guys clearly aren't going to see enough of me in the month of January at Wild Games alone, so I'm also working... PWHL Minnesota games, also in arena hosting, uh, working over 14 games total this month. So pray for me. Slow and steady wins the race, but it's going to be so much fun. And I'm super thankful for new year, new opportunities, literally on January 1st. So good. So are you going to have a cut? Like maybe you and John Merrill can share a cut. That sounds weird. (laughs) It sounded so weird. (laughs) And no. <laughs> and your immediate response of no, like you're d- absolutely not. I don't know if I can look at him right now. So <sighs> it'd be tough. That'd be awkward. Let alone like wake up next to him. And that's taking a really weird turn. So. Mm-hmm. It's going down a route. And I don't think of... his wife would appreciate it either. You know, I didn't mean it in a naughty way. No, I, I know. Do- I know. <laughs> I'm just now I'm joking. I'm <laughs> this is just boundaries. getting weird now. <laughs> Sometimes that's what Apologies we do here. Apologies to everybody. That's what we do here on the Bar Down Beauties podcast. That's going to do it. Uh, do you have a favorite hockey moment from this past week, Kirsten, before we wrap up this week's episode and move on uh, and keep things on the rails just a little bit? Favorite moment? I have two. One Ooh. I've been holding on to. First, the obvious Marc-Andre Fleury's thousandth game. Just a very special moment to witness in person. Super cool. I'm just, yeah, I feel very fortunate I was able to be there and be witness to literal history happening that people will talk about for forever, like hockey Mm -hmm. fans, everybody. So that was super cool. My other favorite hockey moment, this one, I'm kind of cheating. It happened about two weeks ago, but we didn't record last week. Yeah, that's fair. I was holding on to it. I was working the NA3HL showcase right before the holidays, and there was an entire fourth grade class that came to watch one of the teams because their teacher – her son is the goalie for the Norwich Sea Captains in the NA3HL. And she it was just a super cool experience introducing the game to an entire new group of young fans. They all drew signs for all of the players. They all were going around getting autographs from the players. They got to go on a field trip to this game to watch them. And they also, their teacher turned it into like a stat lesson. Mm-hmm. She like made a couple different lessons surrounding this hockey game. So it was super cool. I know next year, her next fourth grade class is going to design jerseys for their team for like special holiday jerseys and is also going to make drawings that are going to be their new name plates in the locker room. So I just thought it was a super cool way to get younger fans involved. And those kids too were so excited and just cheering, like truly probably having the best day that I'm sure they went home and just talked to. I got to interview two of the kids and that was super fun. They loved it. And yeah, just, I loved every ounce of that day. So that is so freaking cool. I encourage more teachers to do that. More teachers need to take their kids to hockey games. There's a lot to be learned there. There really is. And I truly like, I've never heard of a field trip like that before. So it was awesome. That's awesome. I, I, uh, I love that. Good for them. What school are they from? I don't know. Oh, some reporter you are. (laughs) Well, also like, (laughs) 
I don't know. It's one of those things too, where it's like, if you're going to post something online, I don't, I don't know. Like, no, I was just curious. If, I was, you know, that's, that's my little reporter brain, right? Where I'm like, well, where are they from? What, what, what's a teacher? Like, I don't know. I'm just curious. I get it. I you get know. it. Especially because it was a field, school. like you said, it was a field trip. So I was wondering if they were like from Blaine and they were close by. So it was easy for them to go to Super Rink or whatever. Somewhere um, in the cities. Metro. Somewhere in the Twin Cities. Very cool. My favorite moment. It's got to be just the prank war. I know that's not original, but it's I am here for it. I am here for the fun that this team is finally having. It was a tough go. And obviously it would have been inappropriate for them to be having fun and playing jokes and doing things when they were doing so poorly, when their coach got fired, when players were getting injured, like it was not an appropriate time to be having fun and smiling, but I love when that returns to the game. I mean, it makes you like, I enjoy going to the rink because now that I go to the rink for practices, because they actually have practices, it just doesn't feel like such a drag because they're losing. Like I prefer, I know some reporters enjoy covering a team that's bad because it's very dramatic. It's very hostile. It's very volatile. And that can be fun. And don't get me wrong. It can be, but I like the happy go lucky, just, happy cheery things because usually when a team's bad a lot of stuff goes down right you're firing coaches gms you're getting really angry quotes so that's where sometimes it's better to cover a bad team but i prefer the happy fun nice ones see that's not my kind of fun i'm too timid <laughs> i would not want to talk to anyone who's in a bad mood so yeah no it's, it's not i don't true. recommend it it's i try to kill them with kindness then like i'll be like hi how are you good to see you and, that and then work. you get the Dan Campbell response. How do you think I am? <laughs> I'm angry. <laughs> Poor Detroit kitty cats. That's a that's a tough scene there. Kind of mm -hmm. got screwed. The NFL's rigged. Let's all just call a spade a spade. It's definitely rigged. So I would agree. That's good. The story yeah. writers are having script writers. Yeah, it's not very nice to Detroit. I don't. I like Detroit. I like Dan Campbell. I'm here for it. I'm here for them to do a good good job this season. I don't love the Dallas Cowboys. They never have. So you mm -hmm. know, there's that. Anyway, guys, we also love each and every one of you. Thank you for letting us take the week off last week in favor of a much needed break, because as Kirsten said, it is a heavy, heavy workload coming up this month of January for your Minnesota Wild, but it's hockey, baby. We love it. You guys are the best. Let us know. Drop your comments below how you think the Minnesota Wild will do this week. Any other things that we didn't touch on or anything that you have thoughts on. Also, again, big shout out to PWHL Minnesota as they kick off their season. Can't wait to come check out some games uh, for them. Reminder, they are playing at XL Energy center all their home games i think there's what like 12 home games kirsten 12 home games 12 home games and i think all but one are at the indications x. later okay on. okay yeah and i think all of them but one are at the x because the wild are at the x one of the games right mm -hmm. so uh very exciting time for them very exciting time for hockey here in the state of hockey uh you guys are the best as always shout out to soda stick don't forget to use code bar down beauties at checkout for 15 percent off all of your purchases uh shout out to our friends over at talk north jim beam grain belt royal credit union Livia, and I think that's everybody. Yep, run it all down. You guys are the best. Um, we'll catch you next week or at the X sometime this week. Enjoy and go wild.